Morning, Mr. Cumming. You've got um, a list of your philosophy students. So you need them to be wise there to pick up your other number for the um, for their IA. Um, have you got them ready? Are they like supposed to be uploaded? Come over, come all the way over to the middle. A uh, wound company. Come over here. Over, over this side. It's got more light. Yes, I can't see you. Okay, thank you very much. Um, you're welcome to the um, Enrichment Lecture for Economics Enrichment Week. Um, and uh, just before half term, all the staff got together and we, we did um, a talkology um, uh, exercise that you're um, probably also going to do. So it got me thinking about the um, object I'd put into a theory of knowledge exhibition. The one I alighted on um, is an object now but it's unlikely to be one in the future. I'm talking money, of which the thesaurus gives us 39 synonyms. Bread, dough, chips, and gravy especially appeal to me. The Swedish Central Bank, one of the first to issue uh, banknotes, is likely to be one of the first to have all notes taken back out of circulation on current trends by 2030, and the use of cash is declining fast in Sweden. China is also a, a fast at dispensing with the use of notes. Kublai Khan, the 13th century leader of the Yuan dynasty, was the first leader to back notes, not with precious metal, like gold, but with the threat of force. People not accepting the currency, 
could be put to death. Both of these countries are moving towards a digital currency, but they are not the first. Ecuador, Uruguay, and the Bahamas have all experimented with central bank digital currencies. So what does money do for us? Firstly, it acts as a unit of account, which is to say, a way of expressing value. Secondly, money is a medium of exchange and can be used in financial transactions as well as to buy goods and services. Thirdly, it acts as a store of value, a way to maintain the purchasing power of our wages and wealth over time. In markets, prices change all the time, and money enables markets to function well, responding to changing circumstances. Relative price changes, reflecting changes in demand and supply in an economy, are easily facilitated with money. There are two types of money. Outside money is created by central banks. Today, it is a fiat currency, which is not backed by anything other than faith in the central bank or government that has created it and stands behind it. Creating too much of outside money would simply lead to a loss of faith in the ability of money to act as a store of value, medium of exchange and unit of account, because inflation would follow. Government decrees that this fiat currency must be accepted and we have to pay our taxes in this money form. Businesses will accept this form of money because they believe that other people will also accept it in payment for goods and services. Government can make uh, outside money more trustworthy by backing it with something that is in scarce supply, for example, gold, but this constrains the ability of central bank to print notes when required, such as during the Great Depression or after the financial meltdown in 2007 and the COVID crisis in, uh, that we've just come through, if we were still under a backed currency regime and these backed currency regimes were um, abandoned when uh, the United States um, uh, basically left the Bretton Woods system in 1971. The other type of money is inside money, created by the private sector. When a bank, bank grants a loan to a customer, it credits this money to the customer and has created a bank deposit. The money circulates within the banking system in payment for goods and services and passes through a number of financial institutions. This money circulates within the banking system as a medium of exchange and is created out of thin air based on the bank's willingness to lend to businesses and individuals. The constraint on a bank's ability to create credit is competition with other banks. A bank that created too much credit would risk losses from excessive lending and go out of business. This inside money is in zero net supply in the banking system. The assets equal the liabilities. For example, a household that takes out a loan to buy a house would have a liability. When it passes this money to the house seller, the house seller has an asset. Outside money, however, is an asset of the, on the balance sheet of the private sector, but a liability on the current ba bank balance sheet. Inside money stimulates economic activity. Loans provided to businesses and households enable investment and consumption. Confidence in inside money is maintained by the confidence in the ability to convert inside money by one commercial bank into the inside money of another commercial bank, and the ability to convert it into outside money at the request of customers. The central bank stands behind the commercial bank, uh, banks and is willing to act as a lender of last resort if they get into trouble, thus guaranteeing that the risks of a run on any bank um, is reduced. Right? And we saw that during, during the banking crisis in the United Kingdom where there was a, uh, a bank run on a bank but um, it stopped once the central bank intervened um, uh, um, to prevent it, the, the, the bank run from getting worse. Um, if we have too little money creation, um, uh, uh, sorry, if we have too little money creation, e uh, creating economic activity, e uh, sorry, I'll have to start that sentence again. If we have uh, too little money creation, economic activity is curtailed, 
but too much money creation results in rising uh, prices. Finance is facing major disruption. Paying with our smartphones is widespread throughout the developed to developing world. Bitcoin has ca captured the imagination of the public since being introduced in 2009. The technology is truly innovative and is likely to outlast the coin itself. Innovation in the financial industry um, should democratize finance and improve the lives of the poor, expanding their access to savings and credit products. Savers should have more options. Small entrepreneurs access to secure finance from sources other than the banks. Domestic and international payments should become cheaper and quicker, benefiting customers, businesses, and migrants. But the new technologies also hold significant risks that could end up hurting the disadvantaged. Decentralized payment systems hold out the prospect of cheaper ways of doing business and less risk to the system if one were to fail. But if customers and businesses were to lose confidence in private payment systems, then there could be a rolling shutdown of interconnected payment systems. New transaction systems, uh, settlement systems, can be the victim of hacking. Major private sector players are emerging, like Facebook's Libra, now rebranded as DM, where the pledge today is that one unit of DM is issued for every $1 deposited, but what happens if, in the future, Units of DM are issued back by Facebook's own resources, and not dollars. Amazon coins are becoming a viable medium of exchange. Buy your games and apps on Amazon today. Tomorrow, you might well be able to buy a range of goods uh, with the coin. Where is now the demand for a central bank coin? These coins, like um, a DM and Amazon coins, are called stable coins. What happens to central bank power if stable coins become a store of value? Central bank money currently uh, performs the functions of being a medium of exchange and a store of value, as well as a unit of account. But in the future, privately issued digital currencies may perform these functions. The central bank will no longer be able to control the economy with monetary policy, the setting of interest rates, as it does today. Capital flows and currency volatility could become more widespread, representing a threat to developing countries. A private payment system becomes more vulnerable in times of economic stress and freezes up if there is a fall in confidence and modern economies can't function without a functioning payment system. Central banks are responding to the, the creation of private digital currencies within investigations into issuing their own digital currencies. On one level, there could be a digital rebranding of retail money markets between businesses and customers as suppliers, and the wholesale money markets between banks and financial institutions. Um, there is not, there's not much of an efficiency gain from wholesale money markets uh, where money is already issued electronically but retail central bank digital currencies could provide financial stability without limiting the f financial innovation and provide a backstop when confidence in payments, uh, private payment systems dries up. There are advantages of switching to a central bank digital currency. Monetary policy can become more easier to implement, particularly in times when spending needs to be encouraged by making interest rates negative and an electronic trail helps prevent against money laundering, bribery, and using cash to avoid taxes. However, a proliferation of digital lending uh, platforms would make it more difficult for the central bank to influence interest rates throughout the economy. The central bank will still have to maintain credibility in implementing monetary policy and not be swayed to create a digital currency to finance government budget deficits. Emerging market um, economies can use fintech to leapfrog developed countries by using more innovative ways um, of conducting finance and banking. These economies, the, the, the developing economies, 
um, don't have old vested interests slowing the adoption of digital currencies. Additionally, the developing economies have growing demand for financial products and services from their growing middle classes. Secondly, financial regulation in emerging economies has allowed providers like Alipay to experiment, and it's on the basis of the experiment that you get new innovations. And thirdly, the widespread use of mobile phones uh, means that there doesn't have to be an investment in the infrastructure. The benefits of fintech are greater in countries where large numbers of people do not have access to banking, leaving them without saving, credit and insurance products in often rural communities, making inward remittances cheaper, benefiting those in the developing countries who receive them. However, volatile capital inflows often destabilize these emerging economies through an appreciation of the exchange rate, making their exports less competitive and putting money into the financial system, which is lent and fuels a demand boom and rising prices. Trust is very important in banking. What we use as money must be a reliable medium of exchange that is acceptable in payment for goods and services. To, for money to act as a reliable store of value, there must be confidence that the central bank will not reduce the value of the currency by issuing too much of it. In days gone by, when people lived close together and transacted with the same people throughout their life, then trust was easier to build. Today, you're unlikely to get credit from a retailer over an extended period of time, and you'll have to make payments when you, um, uh, when you receive the goods. It's the credit card company that guarantees to Apple that they will receive payment when you buy a new iPhone. If you fail to repay the credit card firm, then you, they will report you to a credit rating agency and you will be much less likely to be able to gain access to credit in the future. Both the buyer and Apple trust the credit card firm to intermediate the transaction. Cash made it unnecessary to trust. There also needs to be a legal system to back up this trust. Institutions are important to the smooth functioning of the economy. With digital payments, both the buyer and the seller's intentions need to be verified. The buyer has the money to pay and the seller has the goods to sell. If money is digital, blockchain, te blockchain technology provides this trust. There's also some partial anonymity for the parties to the transaction. The transparency on the public ledgers means that the transactions can't be reversed once established. Digital currencies have the power to bring financial services to poor households, but rich households with greater financial literacy could capture most of the gains. It is not obvious how inequality would be impacted. Markets could become more concentrated as people join the network um, uh, that everyone else is using, thus giving early entrants a dominant position even if other barriers to entry into the market are low. A central bank digital currency could stifle private sector financial innovation by drawing money away from traditional banks. Central banks do not want to get involved with things the private sector does better. In authoritarian societies, central bank digital currencies could become an, in, an instrument of government control and remove the anonymity and privacy citizens in open societies currently enjoy. Competition between central banks and the private sector provi for providing the functions of money has always been there. Just over a century ago, the private sector lost out to the central banks in acting as a medium of exchange and a store of value when central banks like the Fed were established. Digital currencies will act um, as a more efficient medium of exchange, but perhaps not as a viable store of value. FinTech is giving the commercial banks a run for their money with a larger array of financial products to suit the diverse needs of households and firms. However, commercial, commercial banks are still there. Central banks uh, will still be necessary in the FinTech revolution and cash is still likely to remain. 
The job of central banks in influencing interest rates throughout the economy will become more difficult. The US dollar is still likely to remain as the dominant world currency for some time, as a store of value because of the trust there is in the institutions in the USA. It is perhaps ironic that cash created by the government is used to circumvent payments to the government. Cash use for legitimate transactions in the future may be replaced by digital currencies, so if it remains in circulation, may be used to fund more illegitimate transactions. Bitcoin hasn't taken off as a medium of exchange, but has come to be seen as a store of value. The digital currencies that, in the future, act effectively as a medium of exchange are more likely to be the ones backed by reserves of fiat currencies issued by the central banks. The use of Bitcoin as a store of value is based on its limited supply. In contrast, the money issued by the central banks is seen to have, been, to have value because its supply can be increased in times of economic stress. Cryptocurrencies developed to show that a trusted authority in the private sector can accomplish payment clearing and settlement. However, the arrival of these digital currencies now encouraging central banks to establish their own, their own uh, with the additional risk that these central bank digital currencies may make government surveillance of economic activity all the easier. How fintech will develop is riven with questions society has to grapple with, and the answers are not obvious, but innovative and disruptive it is. Thank you.